Welcome to the latest edition of Anyone, Anywhere, Anytime with me, Marshy, and Kenny. Well, our Golden Eagle football team is 1-0 to start the season after smashing all corn state at the Rock on Saturday night. I thought we looked solid in all three phases of the game, but most importantly to most Golden Eagle fans is we look stable at that quarterback position with Billy Wiles. So, Billy, if you're watching this, we need you to have a big season because this schedule's pretty tough, and you're going to be a big key for us winning that Sun Belt Championship in 2023. Well, it wasn't all positive news in my eyes at the Rock on Saturday night because of the jerseys. I got to be frank with you, and a lot of people feel the same way. They looked orange to me many times in the game, and I know many people watching it on TV thought those were orange jerseys. I mean, our colors are black and gold. I mean, look at my jersey from back in the day. We wore an old gold, you know, but it's clearly gold. And if you don't want to go the old gold route, I get that. You know, through years, we've, we've tried that yellow gold look. Uh, if you don't want to go there, I get that. But, but clearly with both those options, the color was gold when you looked at it. And uh, too many times on Saturday night, people saw orange. And, and I've heard a lot of nothing but orange from the fans about that. So I'm not a big fan of, of seeing those jerseys in the future, to be frank with you. Well, we had some sad news from the entertainment world recently with the passing of music icon Jimmy Buffett. He was a beloved figure in the Southern Miss world. So I thought it a perfect time in the fan comment section of the show for you to share some of your favorite Jimmy Buffett memories. And we're going to get to those in this next segment that we call Four and Out. So I took to social media this week to ask you to share your favorite Jimmy Buffett memories. I had so many great comments come in. I wish I could read them all, but the name of the segment is Four and Out. So I did pick four of them, but once again, I, I could read them all because great, great memories from everyone with Jimmy Buffett. But first up, Aaron Lee said it's only half past 12, but I don't care. It's five o'clock somewhere. Great, great lyric right there from Jimmy Buffett. Next up, Reagan Stock still shared a memory from Tad Gormley Stadium in New Orleans from around 96. Little Richard opened for Jimmy Buffett. We brought a dozen folks in the 36-foot motorhome. Little Richard and Jimmy put on a show. Some things from the night are a little fuzzy because it was that kind of night. Next up, Tim Carter. Saw him at the Roxy in Hollywood, California, just before Margaritaville became a hit. And finally, my friend Jim Cole, who's a great Golden Eagle, he shares a lyric. He says, Jimmy, some of it's magic, some of it's tragic, but I had a good life all the way. And Jim added, it's a wonderful reminder of the beauty of life, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Great Jimmy Buffett memories right there. And please keep the fan interaction coming into the show. Well, Southern Miss has a huge challenge on the road this week in Tallahassee with top 10 Florida State. So I thought it a perfect time to talk about what kind of mindset it takes to perform well in those big venues when you're an underdog. So I brought in former Southern Miss head football coach and Hall of Famer Jeff Bauer, former Southern Miss defensive coordinator and Hall of Famer John Thompson, and former linebacker for Southern Miss and also a Hall of Famer T.J. Slaughter. Well, this week, Southern Miss has a huge challenge playing in Tallahassee at Florida State, so I thought it was a great time to get three guys who definitely know about coaching and playing in big venues on road games. And, and first up, I brought in the Conference USA Coach of the Decade in the 90s, my head coach, Jeff Bauer. Next up, my defensive coordinator and one of the greatest defensive minds in the history of college football, John Thompson. And you obviously can't talk Southern Miss nasty bunch defense unless you talk about Southern Miss Hall of Famer and the guys in the NFL for eight years, the one and only T.J. Slaughter. So thank you for being on, everybody. First up, I'm going to get right to it. Coach Bauer, big road games, which you know about playing and coaching in. What was your mindset getting ready for those games? Well, figure out a way to win. Um, you know, from a coaching standpoint, Marchant, 
Um, in all honesty, you know, there were a lot of games you worried about getting your team ready to play. Uh, big road games or big home, big games, um, you know, against some, you know, high-ranked teams or, or whatever. Um, you know, that was the game. That's why you recruited those kids. They wanted to come here and they wanted to play against competition like that and you want to coach against competition like that. But from a, a, you know, a standpoint of just getting them ready, I tried to keep things – uh, consistent from week to week uh, in our preparation. And uh, regardless who you played, uh, you know, you went out and had the best practice each day and day to day and throughout the week. And, and um, you know, there was always a lot of hype around those games, particularly around uh, the Southern Miss people and everything. So, you know, from a coaching standpoint, um, those were probably the easier weeks to get your guys really prepared to go out and give their best effort. Oh, great point right there. And, and Coach Thompson, your take on leading the nasty butts defense back in the day on big road games. Well, I, I'll, I'll go back to what Coach Bauer said. One thing he did so well and, and it just bled through the team was he convinced us that we weren't underdogs, that let's go in there to win the dang game. And we, I don't, there's never been one that we went into thinking that that uh, we had to do something special. We just had to play well. And uh, if we did, we could come out and win the game, which we did, you know, many times. But that was that was the mindset. He set the tone and, and set it with practice, set it with the coaches, with every with everybody. And it was um, and, and we tried to do that. I mean, we all got a little hyped. I, I can remember. My first one really that way was probably uh, Alabama won the national championship. And I want to say it was 92 when they had great players on defense. And I can remember sitting in, in Legion Field being like, what the heck is fixing to happen to us? And we go out there and we had a chance to win the game. I think they won it by on a fake punt. And and we scored on defense and we did we we played them probably – as as well or better than anybody all year long, and I learned a lot in that game that you know don't uh, don't doubt these Golden Eagles they're gonna fight. Tyrone Tyrone Nix reminds me of that game. He looked over and he said, "Man, you look scared before the game." And I said, "Well, that's because I was." But um, learn from that. <laughs> Heck yeah, I, I had that nervous energy before games, and and TJ, you know, I don't think any player had a better mindset than you on road games. I mean, you played at places like Nebraska, Penn State. Texas A&M, Alabama four times, Florida, Florida State. I mean, you played basically everywhere. It was a big venue in the South. What was your mindset preparing for a big road game? Well, I think it was all in the preparation. You know, we prepared. I mean, I think we worked out hard all summer. Coach Coach Thompson used to always make an emphasis and don't be cutting corners. I remember we used to run – the field and some of your guys would try to cut the corner and go in the grass on the sidewalk. They're like, no, stay on the sidewalk. And just not to cut the corners. But um, when I got to the games, you know, I thought we was prepared. You know, we practice our butt off. I mean, our practice used to be so intense between the offense and defense. It was crazy. So when we played somebody else, I was happy. You know, I was like, I'm going to go and enforce my will. I, was, I wanted to be the tempo setter. I wanted to go out there and I'm say I'm gonna smack somebody in the mouth first to let them know that we here, and we mean business. And I never really looked at ourselves as an underdog either. I think I started in eleven could battle anybody. I just felt that way all the time about us. Our, our core group, my brothers. That's why I looked at it. I looked at us like a family, and I was gonna do whatever I had to do to inflict my will on them to show them that we was gonna win. Oh, absolutely. Great take right there. And, and uh, man, I, that gives me chills listening to TJ talk, Coach. Me and you both. Oh, man. <laughs> no, 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 Coach, I set the tone of the reason this show, getting the mindset of this big game we got at Florida State, Coach Bauer. And uh, you know a big road win at Florida State in 89 when you went down and played them at Jacksonville. Brett Favre, late touchdown pass, beat them 30-26. to 26. What was the mindset of that game? And how would you guys beat the Knowles on the road when they were top 10 that year? Well, we were pretty good. And, of course, we had far of a quarterback. And any time you lined up with him, you got a chance to win, no matter who you played. And, um, you know, I remember that game. It was hot. Uh, 
which was okay. I think we were used to it based on what we we did and what we practiced in in preseason. And um, I can remember we played two offensive lines. Um, I learned that from Whitey Jordan back in my days at SMU when uh, we were too deep good enough to play two offensive lines. The 2-0 line got every third possession. And I believe, Marchant, our winning touchdown drive, we had the two offensive line in the game. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, and um, a big win for us and, um, you know, one of many big wins and everything. But uh, that was a great atmosphere. I really believe when I when I think back and I look back at that game, uh, that was a major difference in the game. We were pretty fresh at the end of the game, and and uh, you know what uh, winners do uh, when the game's on the line. We made that drive at the end of the game, uh, you know, in a far touchdown pass, and uh, ended up with a big win. Yeah, that was a huge win. Put some, you know, the the, and and I will tell you this: sometimes, you know, the you talked about hard jobs to coach. When you win a game like that to play the next week, that is a hard job. Getting your kids, you know, they read the print, you know, uh, the so-called upset. I don't ever think they were upsets. You know, you go in every game expecting to win the game. Uh, but, you know, from a coaching standpoint, after you play games like that, and that was a very emotional game, um, and after a win and then all the publicity and this and that, sometimes your players read a little bit more. That's when it, that's when coaching is tough to get ready for that next ball game. And that's a great thing to put on. I, I want to ask a little bit more on that with, with uh, Coach Thompson and TJ. I mean, that, that week after a big win, we won at Georgia and then LSU when I'm going to play with you. I mean, getting us ready, you know, I know LSU's last game of the season, but getting the mindset of the big road games, I mean, what, what's that? What's that like after getting the win, getting the team back together? <laughs> Was that to me? Yes, sir. Yeah, Coach Thompson, yeah. to you. You know, I, I'm still learning from Coach Bauer. Like, I'm the head coach here at a high school in Georgia, and we're going to play that second offensive line our next game. We're going to do that. We hadn't done it. They're not uh, ready, but that's a great idea. So, uh, you know, it, it goes back again to Coach Bauer. I mean, he didn't allow that. Every game was the same. And every every week we had to prove ourselves. There was, I mean, we had a couple of maybe cupcakes, you know, but we didn't we didn't see it like that. You guys, I don't think you guys ever saw it like that. If we were supposed to win, let's go out and put a foot on their neck. If if uh, we were, it was going to be a tough one. Let's let's know that we're going to you know have to battle for sixty minutes. But now it was. Um, now, some sometimes uh, it took us a little bit to get over it. Maybe a Sunday or Monday, but once we got back on the practice field, it was all it was all go to work, get ready for the next one. And TJ, you were part of a lot of big wins in your Southern Miss career. What was that like? Getting your mindset as a player back after a big win for that next week? Well, I think uh, Coach Bauer hit it on the head. You know, it was just when you won, you won, you celebrated. But then we got back on the field. It was all about let's get the tempo back where we want it for this week and get up for for the next appointment. I mean, opponent. Um, I can remember times where we was out there. We didn't practice to the best of our ability, and Coach would come to and to talk to the leaders and say, "Hey, pick this thing up." I remember a couple times he said, "TJ, get this thing started," and I go swing on somebody or something, and you start a fight or something, and the practice got live and you realized then it was time to pick it up and get back focused. You know, that's the way we did it back then. Hey, Shan, that was always good to have a little rhubarb on the practice field. As long as it didn't get out of hand. You know, you know what? That brings up a great, no, nobody was going to mess with TJ, you know, like, let's just call that what it is. But no, you guys let fight. He never messed with me. He never messed with me, Marshan. No, I knew, well, trust me. I knew. <laughs> but you guys used to let fights, Coach Thompson, Coach Bauer, go a little bit longer at practice. What was the reason for that sometimes, Coach? What at the time, if you don't mind? <laughs> uh, sometimes we had to turn it up a notch. And, you know, you. <laughs> and you, you, you wanted competition during the only way you get better is compete. And we right. tried to go good against good. During practice, as TJ knows, and and JT, and uh, as much as we could, and sometimes if things got a little chippy out there, that was okay, as long as it with was within reason. 
uh, didn't get out of hand. Uh, but uh, heck, I liked a tough competitive football team. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's um, may not sound right, but sometimes it's good to see some stuff like that happen on the practice field. Yeah, and Coach, you, your take on fights sometimes, y'all let go a little bit longer in practice than need be. <laughs> Depends on who it was, Marchant. You know? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. I, I, can, I can remember uh, when TJ, we had a freshman come in the meeting room, and I told the freshman, hey, that's TJ's seat. And he said, not anymore. It's mine. I said, you better be careful. And <laughs> <laughs> TJ, TJ knocked him out of the chair, and I said, "I told you, Billy, that was TJ's seat. Let's go to the beat." <laughs> he, he set the tone, man. <laughs> uh, I love it, TJ. You remember that moment? I mean, moment. I mean, when you talk, people listen. You remember moments like that? <laughs> yeah, but I was, I truthfully, like people say, I was mad. Um, was angry. I was angry at a lot of things, but my whole job is I wanted to win. I didn't care if I had two tackles, if I had 30 tackles. I just wanted to win. And that was my main goal. I mean, a lot of offensive coaches used to get mad at me sometimes and stuff. But I honestly was wanting to win the game. And whatever you needed from me, whatever y'all wanted, what look you needed from me, I wanted to win. And the people didn't understand, my sensation with winning was everything. I didn't care. We It was three to zero as long as we won, you know. And I, I, it was a couple of times I felt like I, as a player, let my coaches down. And, you know, I mean, Coach Bowden, though, he probably could tell me to do any game. Coach JT, they could tell me to run through the wall. I would have done it for them because I just looked, like I said, I looked at this like my family. And I looked at things just a little bit different than other guys. So if I had to jump somebody's ass to get things going, that's what I was going to do. I remember one time it was John Nixon. We was playing, I think we were playing Cincinnati, and they was giving us the business. And I fell, and um, he came and slammed his helmet down. And I, like, literally about to jump on him, and I cussed him out because I was like, that what we helmet ain't dead, Ned, we ain't fucking playing. You know, we got to get together. We got to mount up, you know. And then I said, somebody set the tempo. And then I was like, oh, what am somebody? I'm going to set the tempo. You know, and you smack somebody. And when you smack somebody, we all fit. We all fit. We all fit. And so that's the way I looked at it. I just, my main goal was winning. I didn't care about stats. Like, I, I hear people tell me, well, I had this many sessions. I had this and I had this. I said, damn, I never really thought about stats. I didn't. My main thing was, did we get a W? Hey, yeah, Marchant, you know, he, hearing him speak and, and saying what he just said, He's the kind of guys that make coaching easier. Um, you know, there are a lot of guys that, that – and good players, uh, a lot of them, that aren't very vocal. You don't have to be vocal, but, um, you know, we leaned on that guy right there that you're looking at now that just said that. And, um, you know, that he's an extension of coaching. Um, you know, some of the things that we might say didn't have the same impact when he said it. Um, he's out there sweating bullets and all that, and and uh, you never you never doubted his effort. And uh, when when you have all that now, when you say something, it means something, and it had a great effect on our football teams. Oh heck yeah! I mean, he he was a freshman. Uh, my junior year, and when TJ talked as a freshman, I listened. So, I mean, you know, no telling when he was a senior leading that team. But, Coach, you bring up a great point with effort and TJ, and I'll get to your take on this, too, if you don't mind. Coach Thompson, when I think of you, I think of the most fun game I ever played in, and that's at Georgia in 96. This is where I'm getting into you probably being one of the greatest defensive minds in college football history. The offseason, you changed our 4-3 to a 3-4 hybrid-type defense. Nobody was doing that. We go to Georgia. They are absolutely confused on offense. I, I, TJ, I couldn't wait to get back in, in, the, in the game. They had no idea what we were doing. Coach, talk about that and beating Georgia in 96. Literally, I know players got to play, but that scheme you put in had a huge hand in that game. Well, that, that we had a little advantage. I've said that all along. We, we visited Marshall uh, where uh, Jim Donnan had just come from. And coaching, you get you know nothing's new in coaching. You you get it from every. You get it from one person is stealing. You get it from two or three. It's research. So we had researched Georgia very well. We went there, and then 
uh, a guy named Tim Rose, who and we got the three four from him, the, our Oki package, and that was the the first game uh, that we opened it up, and and we opened it up in in grand style. I I texted you the other day, and you'll be interested in this too, Coach and and uh, TJ. I ran into a uh, Matt Stitchcomb at a at a touchdown club event the other day, and we just spoke to each other and. and he named, he said, Marshant, Marshant Kenny had 13, <laughs> had 13 tackles. And T.J. Slaughter, we, we didn't know what was going on with that madman. It was, uh, I mean, this was, that was however many years ago, 20-something uh, years ago, almost 30 years ago. And it was just, hey, how you doing? And that's the first thing out of his mouth. But we um, – we played awfully well in, in that game. And the offense did too. Didn't score a lot, but the offense did too. Uh, it was a full team victory, but that um, we had them, we had them backed up and had them confused. And I got a picture on, on my wall or on, up on the mantle up there with TJ, the very last play of that game. And TJ, you wouldn't, you wouldn't last long playing the way you did, but TJ's parallel and hitting Mike Bobo, and you're on the other side, Marchant, and said Walthall was on the other side. The last play of the game, selling out. And uh, I can remember that play like it was yesterday. I remember the call. I remember everything about it. But um, we played well. We, pl we played really well against a really good team. But uh, that was a lot of work that went into it. And, you yeah, know, and, and all and, the and, coaches, and, all our coaches and players, Mar everything. Marchant. A little something to add to that. After the game, I think we had uh, – there was a lot of talk about the game, and there were a lot of quotes from Jim Don, and, and he said, yeah, they did some things we didn't expect. They were blitzing six, sometimes seven. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to JT after, you know, probably Monday after the film work and all that or Sunday, and because he always – he knew I liked keeping a free safety out there. Most of the time, which means if you do that, you never bring more than five. Um, and JT said, Coach, we never brought six or seven. We brought five at the max. And uh, But it's just an indication to tell you, because of our defense and all the movement that we did and things like that, um, you know, the appearance of it, it looked like we were bringing a lot more, and they couldn't block us. And uh, uh, But uh, JT... Correct me if I'm wrong, JT, but we never brought more than five in that game. No, we did a couple of times. We brought six, uh, and maybe on that last play, it was a red zone play, but uh, maybe just once or twice in the whole game. But well, you we never told me when we were bringing that and not playing with a free safety. <laughs> it, it sounded better. You remember, you remember way too much. You, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I can remember the Memphis game when I knew uh, that was coming up. Yeah, you knew that was coming up, and got the uh, ball back on that play. Yeah, who was the running back? Who was, who was the running back? Uh, was something it, Davis, uh, great player, went NFL. Yeah, played um, NFL for a long time. I don't... JT comes up to me, Marchant, during the game. Here we got, we got him in like the third and long or something, and Backed he up. said, uh, uh, "Get ready for this. We uh, we're bringing them all." Next thing I know. Um, the running back, something Davis or whatever, he's running down our sideline. And uh, Rod Davis chases him down and forces a fumble, and we get it back. And he said, see, I told you it'd be good. After about a 40-yard gain, <laughs> thank goodness we, we tackled him. But uh, I always liked the safety back there for those reasons. But, you know, fortunately, that worked out for us. Oh, yeah. They, they, TJ, I want to ask you a question from a player perspective. I mean, that, that Georgia play at the end, that was just icing on the cake. You talk about selling your body out for your team and disrupt the pass. We beat Georgia. Did you have the pick? You may, you may do that while I'm talking. Let's see if Coach Thompson's got it. I mean, it, this is selling out for the team, giving your body and soul to Southern Miss Eat football. That. Yeah. Good Raise enough. it up a little bit, Coach, if you don't mind. Just a little bit. Yeah. There's TJ Slaughter going Superman on Georgia in the – the last offensive play for them to, to seal the game. So, and, and TJ, you had so many plays, I mean, in your career. And there's one road game where you stepped up big. We're at Texas A&M in 98. You had 26 tackles. Oh, my. When you get in the zone like that, in a big venue like that, man, what, what's your mindset like? What, 
Let's go. I played middle line, but I got to have 26 tackles in that game. Well, let me tell you first, um, to compliment Coach Thompson is uh, another thing. When we when we started out with the prowling, and that was the first I ever heard of prowling. Now, we used to do this for like five minutes at practice. He ain't telling you. We used to squat down, and he would time us, and you couldn't cross over your feet. But if you cross over your feet, you lose power. He said you got to be ready to go when the ball snapped. So everybody had to prowl and stay low, but you couldn't cross your feet because when the ball snapped, you had to get to your positions. And we used to do that religiously, religiously. And all of us was, you got to think, we our team was all about six foot to six three. So everybody standing together, you might have a couple of six fours. And I think Say Scott was probably the biggest guy we had on the lead line, but all of us looked like the same height. If you didn't look at our body size and width, they're from the DBs to the linebackers to the D-line. So it was really hard to tell what we was doing. But I knew Coach T was really creative when I was a rookie, I mean a freshman. And he put in, they had some running back at Indiana Hoosiers. And he put a package in called Hoosier. And I literally lined up like a safety behind the two linebackers. And wherever the ball care went, he said, just make the tackle. Ah, your responsibility if this, this guy run, knock the shit out of him. And I'm like, huh, okay. And so there was so many creative things that Coach Thompson put that I had never seen before. But he was like, all right, TJ, you good? You doing what you're going to do? You do it. I, I think I weighed like 205 then. I ain't even, I couldn't even gain no weight until I hurt my ankles. <laughs> you know, I was light, but I, I wasn't scared to hit. So there's so many great memories I have at Southern Miss. People always ask me like, why are you going to Southern Miss? I said Southern Miss was the best place God put me at Southern Miss. Because it was like the best place for me. I mean, I, from Coach Bauer coming to my house with Randy Butler and stuff, it was just like, I, I can't think of a better place to go. And like, I'm, I'm telling you, because we was just like a family. The, us being a van hall, the relationships with the guys I have is just marvelous. Now, back to winning these big games. What was the question? I forgot. No, no, you had 26 tackles at Texas A&M. And just for example, okay. that game, man, I mean, you were just – you knew what to do in a big road game is what I'm getting at. <laughs> you know, the year before, we played Texas a and um, at our place, and I didn't think I had the best game. Um, I had a, a thing. If I played somebody and, and I didn't have the best game, ne the next time I prepare, I prepare. Like, I'll be running stadiums and everything else. I always try to do the, go the extra mile to be prepared for somebody. Um, I had the big – fullback tombs and all like that. And some running back, I think Parker at the time. Uh, no, that, they had the, the joystick guy. I forgot his name. Uh, they played in the lead out for many years, the, the returner guy, the joystick yeah, ran, guy. Ran a kickoff back on us. Yeah. So when I got to that game, I just wanted to ball out. And then I tore my thumb. Somebody tackled, landed on my thumb and tore my thumb. They taped this thumb down. And I'm like, just put me back in the game. I go back out in the game. I partially tear this thumb. So they take, I'm like, literally, I've had 26 tackles with both of my thumbs taped down like this. I had only playing with my fingers. So it was just, I don't, I never wanted to let my team down. And that's the main thing about, I think, I feel about the game. I never wanted to let my players down. I would have played through anything. I would have done anything because, I don't know, I, I, I talked to a lot of athletes and I listen how they look at our their teammates and I, I looked at y'all like y'all were my brothers. Like, y'all was the closest thing to family to me. So I would die for my family. So I just took that attitude on the field. And mm -hmm. I literally about injuries or what I felt. I was like, I'll be fine after. I'll get well when this get over. And I remember I went and had surgery. Then the next week I had to play with a big old cast on. And we played East Carolina. And I remember they – I was putting my mouthpiece in one time and the guy handed the ball off. I'm calling the calling the player summon it. They hand the ball up the middle. I take off, take two steps, and I flip the guy on his back. And I literally go down to my knee to hit him to get lower to him. And it, so it was just I always just wanted to put my best foot forward. I just wanted to win every game and I wanted coaching them to be proud of me. I really no, were, I know they were proud of you. Mm -hmm. We were proud of you. You put your heart and soul in the Southern Miss football. And, and real quick. I mean, we're talking about big wins here and there. That's what we did. I mean, Coach Bauer, Coach Thompson, TJ, there were some big road games we lost. When we're in a big road venue, the momentum's completely against us. We lost it. You know, crowds into it. Coach Bauer, what are some things you try to get 
to get momentum back for the team in those moments? Oh, you know, I don't know if I could point to any one play. I, you know, one play will turn a game sometimes. And, uh, you know, I, being an offensive mind, uh, you know, as an assistant coach and offensive coordinator, um, you know, I always felt like it's always good to try to um, really game plan three or four opportunities that you have to get a big play. And what are your big plays? What are the plays after study and tape that you feel like you have an opportunity, um, you know, to, to make something big happen? Um, but, uh, you know, when you played in venues like that, when and most of those games were always away games for us, you know, that, that was that was difficult. You had to generate your own excitement within the team. So making a play at a critical time can change a game. And um, I'm not, I don't think you ever game plan for something like that. You, you know, uh, you just you, know, you game plan just to obviously give your players the best opportunity to win and put them in the best position to win. And mm -hmm. um but sometimes you had to create your own enthousi enthusiasm, create your own excitement. Well, yeah. I remember the I remember the bootleg hide it behind your back at Virginia Tech, Coach. That oh yeah, a, that was good. Um, that was a great call. <laughs> I remember but, that one. You know, I, the wheel we, route. I remember the wheel route against Louisville, maybe the same year. Great call. Yeah, and then we uh, we hit. Um, I remember we played Louisville one year, and we. We did a little throwback to the quarterback, and um, and um, and I most memorable moment of that game is I go out there after the game and and shake Howard Schnellenberger's hand, and then he's asking our people, well, "Where's Coach Bauer? I hadn't seen him yet." Uh, <laughs> I think I looked. At, it was early in my my career. I think I was thirty six, thirty seven when I got the head job and everything, but he thought, I don't, maybe thought I was an assistant coach or a manager or something, probably looked more like a manager. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, that's it. Oh, hey, hey, coach Thompson, question for you right there. I mean, you know, defense, for example, comes off the field, we're playing well, maybe, what have you, and sudden change, the offense has a turnover. You, we got to get our mindset back, get in the game, the, the crowd's in it, momentum's changed. What, what, what do you tell the team and the defense there were moments like that to get momentum back. We practiced it. We practiced that. That was a mindset when, with what we called the ready, break, swarm meetings. And we would start a lot of them down on the goal line and say, hey, that's a time for – that was, as TJ said, that fed us. We got excited for that because we – it was that part was in the in the preparation. Look, bad things are going to happen. Our job was to go out there and put the fire out. And it was like, all right, good. We we always used to say, you know what, we're all a little bit crazy, but wouldn't it be fun to start on the minus one or two, you know, mm -hmm. to really go back out there and, and do that. So uh, when if it happened, we'd already been there, we'd already been prepared. So a lot better. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're all – the one, the one play that uh, sticks with all of us, uh, and, and this is not a good moment, but the the Hail Mary with Alabama, uh, when we kicked uh, Alabama. So it's why we, you had to bring that one up. I well, I'm just saying it's still – that is the that, – <laughs> that's the, the worst football moment of, uh, of my career because uh, we whiffed them. We whipped them. It was no fluke. We were the better team. We were more physical. We outplayed them. And Brian Bergdorf hit Todrick Malone, and we we got that galvanized us in a lot of ways. That that we we learned from that game in a lot of ways. But that was uh, still after after all these years and all those game all the games. That is the one that uh, we'll never get over. You know, to get over any losses, but that's one that uh, I don't know. I was just thinking about it. Bad deal uh, at ninety five. JT, they go on to win the national championship. Yeah, yeah, and we we well not not ninety five ninety two they did, which was another close one. Ninety five, they, they were still Bama had a great year, but with Coach Bob, Coach Thompson, TJ, I, I didn't cry that hard after a football game in ninety five in my life. I mean, I'm a, yeah. Like a family member died, man. <laughs> so, but 
Jerry we Harris, we're going to let we, we're going to let Jerry Harris care of the, care of the room. <laughs> Space dog, <laughs> you remember Space that? Dog. He was he was uh, he was distraught. It was it was a terrible. There were a oh, lot so. of other good. That, it, it, there were a whole it, lot more great moments. It, 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 and TJ, real quick, ask you a question. Um, when the offense didn't playing well, defense didn't playing well, what were some things as a leader you told the defense to get their mind back and get that momentum back? Um, I probably can't say what I used to say to defense on this podcast, but uh, my my job was to if if we went going, things weren't going right. To me, I just wanted to knock the crap out somebody. So if you get a big hit, or you lay the wood on somebody, everybody gets crump. So I always looked at it if we went playing good or somewhere, I'm going to try to go knock the shit out of somebody. Just plain and simple. That's just I was always I always called myself a tempo setter. I want to set the tempo. And the tempo is we finna bust you in your mouth. I don't care who you is, where you from, what school you go to, how much money y'all got. It don't make a bill. I'm finna punch you in the mouth and deal with me. If you punch me, I'm gonna punch you back. And we just gonna keep going. And I, I, nine times out of ten, you ain't gonna knock me out. And that's why I looked at it. You ain't gonna knock me out. I'm gonna fight to the end. And that's why we always did it. Yeah, I remember when somebody ticked off TJ, I'm like, you done messed up now. <laughs> so, but hey, <laughs> I know we talk about the Bama losses. Get back to some big wins. First up, Coach Bauer, an unbelievable win in 2000, 21 to nothing at Alabama on national TV. Their top 20 team. Nobody goes in Alabama and wins 21 to nothing. What happened that night, man? What was the mindset of the team getting that kind of win? I don't know. I guess we were ready <laughs> to play, obviously, but uh, no, we. Uh, we played well, and I think Bama at that time was reeling a little bit. Uh, um, but, uh, heck, I remember Raymond Walls intercepting a throwback to the running back uh, going in for a score. I think we scored twice on defense. In it was actually all three phases, offense, defense, special teams, 21-0, okay. all three phases. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a big win up in Legion Field. That, that was good. That was a big win. You know, the Georgia win was big for me. First game of the year. I, I, you know, I signed and played at Georgia out of high school and uh, before transferring to Southern Miss. So that was a, that was a big game for us. Uh, you know, some of those games, some of the big, big wins for me were games where you just felt like you had to win, maybe not even against a very good team. Uh, you know, your team was, uh, you know, maybe in a little funk or whatever. And, uh, you know, those were the, hard coaching games and the games you felt like you you needed to win. But, uh, oh, we played, good Lord, we played so many of them. Nebraska up there, that was huge. After getting beat up there a couple of years earlier uh, when we probably should have won the game. And, um, but we had a, you know, a lot of, a lot of really good wins and, uh, you know, proud of the schedule that we played and how well we did. And, you know, Conference USA back then, Marchant, you know, we talk about some of these games and everything, but boy, we played some Memphis teams and and uh, you know Louisville and other teams in our league uh, that were really good. Uh, Houston, you know, had it going pretty good back then with Art Briles. So, uh, um, you know, a lot of those wins were big, also. Heck yeah, I mean, so many big wins under under your. Uh, career and, and, and Coach Thompson, we'll talk about one. They made a painting about it, man. That, that you and I, Coach Bauer, on the 97 Liberty Bowl, 41 to 7. I mean, Pitt didn't know it. Oh, is. that was a good one. Let's talk about that real quick, Coach Thompson. They made a painting, man. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, Coach, your, your audio, your audio. Press your audio, it's off. See, that's what he'd do to me, Marchant, when I tried to talk to him during the game. He, there you go, he'd cut me off back. and he played. I couldn't, couldn't ignorance. find the button on the phone. I can't hear you. <laughs> it's going off. It's going off. Now, that was uh, everything came together. Uh, we practiced well. You know, it all goes back to preparation. We, um, one, we had, we, we had great players, we had great leaders. And we we were very well prepared, and we had so much confidence going into that game. Um, I mean, so many so many people played. Uh, everybody played well. Everybody. Played. I can remember we 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 scored a couple of times in the first half, and and then and I'm kind of looking at, at Jeff at halftime, and he said, "Well, well, you know what? What can you do this?" I said, "We'll get another one in the second half. We'll get another one." Sure enough, we we got another one in that game, but it was. Um, 
that w- that was uh, the culmination of a, a whole lot of things that happened, you know, in, in that year. And it was so special for so many reasons. And uh, uh, that was a, I see the, I see it behind you. I yeah. see the, one of my favorite bold, pictures. The Paul, the field. Hey, I, Jan, that's big uh, game. Yeah. You know, yeah. good win. I know, and I think I've said this before, but Walt Harris told me after the game, he said, you're the best team we played all year. You play with anybody in this country. Uh, but I remember, you know, AD missed the bus going to the game, if you remember that. Oh, Adelius uh, Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so we get to the stadium and all this. AD finds a way to the stadium. And um, I told JT, I said, I'm going to suspend him for the first half. He missed the bus. JT comes back and said, can you just make it a quarter? And uh, so I said, okay. He negotiated. Um, we made it a quarter. Adelius becomes the defensive player of the game. I said, we ought to do that more often. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and speaking of the, the Liberty Bowl theme, T.J. Slaughter, one of the greatest quotes of all time. We're playing Colorado State in the 99 Liberty Bowl, your last game at Southern Miss. They had an awesome running back, Kevin McDougal. You're interviewed the week leading up to the game. And if you ask you about the running back and you said you had a dream and that in that dream, you hit him so hard that he died. <laughs> you guys went and shut those guys down. Man, talk about that big game where you guys finished number 13 or 14 in the nation that year. <laughs> you telling me to talk about it? Yeah, TJ. You had a dream he died. You hit him so hard. <laughs> you know, um, every time we played a, uh, Big name running back or coach put emphasis on a running back. I took it personal. Like I used to visualize myself hurting them. Like every time from when we played Army, when they had this fullback that ran like two hundred some yards on Louisville. Anytime they said we had somebody that was going run over us, I was going to punish them, and I just took it. And I ran. I I had the dream. because I think I I just had this dude all on my brain all week, and I'm like, I'm gonna hurt him. I'm gonna hurt him. And then I actually ran into him in the bathroom at the banquet. And I swear I wanted to, I, I, took, I literally, I wanted to beat the dude. I literally, I said, I'm going to jump with his right now. If I would have thought it would have kept me out the game, I think I would have whooped him right there in the bathroom. And <laughs> then we get to the game. Hey, I would have <laughs> believe you too. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> like they was, I, I really think our, every lineman they had was like, like was after me. And I mean, I I think they was trying to get me, but I mean, I had a good game still. But uh, and we we beat them. But every time that dude ran the ball, I was somewhere on him. I was somewhere getting at it. And I mean, they were trying to block me every which way they could. Ooh, yeah, you guys shut them down that day too, man. And, and that army yeah. hit that's one of the hardest hits you'll ever hear. I heard that hit against that army fullback you had. They heard the hit out in Laurel, Mississippi, man. It just shot across <laughs> campus. Um, coach. When we talk about some of these big venues that we all played and coached in, is there one or two that stick out that were maybe the toughest to play in on the road? Coach Bauer. Yeah, uh, trying to think. Uh, You know, this one, I don't – Louisville used to play in their their minor league baseball program. St. Louis Cardinals, I think – Yeah, I remember I don't know, they had a – trip over third base or something. <laughs> well, you know, we played – you could not hear in there. I'm telling you, you, the fans were right on us, and they were pretty good, and we were pretty good, and uh, packed house and everything. That might be the loud, loudest venue that um, I can remember coaching in. But we um, – you know, Marchant, we played in so many of them that were um, – mm, I don't know that – uh, you know, I could single one out over the other, um, you know. Uh, but um, I, I can always remember the Louisville game was, you know, the loudest uh, that I've ever coached in anyway. But uh, the rest of them were about, you know, I don't know. If, if you get so involved in the crowd, you're not into the game, you know. But I remember, even though the Louisville game, we won the ball game and everything, it was really difficult to communicate. Yeah, yeah. Coach Thompson, any any venues that you remember that were kind of a little obnoxious? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Texas A&M, 
Texas A&M was um, as, as really set it that they, you know, they come across the field and they do all that swaying and you're trying mm-hmm. to look at them and act like you're trying to do something else. And then they pull the trick on us at halftime. They had the alumni band and they said the guy died, you know, and so that kind of took us down. In 94, I remember that, the halftime. We, we called, the, I, I called <laughs> one of my friends on the staff at Texas, Steve Ensminger, who was at LSU and everybody knows, called him and then he said, yeah, the guy did pass away and, and Jeff sends him, sends the family balls and gear, Southern Miss, condolences, and they made it up. The guy never died. We, 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 were, we were celebrating the guy and he didn't die. But um, I remember that game too. And we kicked it. I remember that ball being kicked off and we, oh, we kicked it to the guy and he took it right back. And that was a tough one. You know, that was, uh, Tennessee was tough. Tennessee wasn't the loudest, but, uh, Going into Tennessee and playing playing Peyton Manning when when he was on uh, was uh, was a tough was a tough chore was a real tough chore. And, and TJ, any any venues stick out for you that were kind of tough to play crowds on you? I ain't gonna say it was tough to play. I used to like that negativity. I used to like the crowd that fed me. So I mean, but I remember like Nebraska after we played Nebraska, you know, their fans were cheering for us. They gave us a stand ovation. After the game, and um, uh, Tennessee was a tough place to play. I just didn't like all that orange, and we lost the game, so I was pissed. But you know, even Florida State, I, I was tired of uh, 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 that Joe beating. I was like, I just wanted to shut them up. You know, like I said, any place that we went and we didn't win, I didn't like it. I'm just gonna be honest. I, I, I didn't pick and choose stadiums. I didn't care. I just wanted to win the game. Yeah, and you won a lot of big ones, too. And, and so perfect timing right there with that Florida State comment as we kind of wrap things up. So this week, once again, our Southern Miss football team has a huge challenge in Tallahassee at Florida State. Coach Bauer, first, what's a message you might have for this team to get their mind right to pull off this upset? Well, you heck, you were recruited here at Southern Miss to win games, no matter who you play. And you're good enough to go out and compete and beat again and beat a, 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 a which I think will be a good Florida State team. So um, hey, go in there expecting to win. Expect to play your best. Make sure you do your preparation and uh, dot the I's, cross the T's, do it all week long. Better chance. Uh, the more you do that, the better chance you have to play really well. You will play well. So um, hey, expect to win. Great words right there. Coach Thompson, what's the message you have for this Southern Miss team heading to Tallahassee? No, that's – man, it's so good to hear Coach Bauer with all that, the same thing. But, hey, feed off feed off that energy like TJ said. Feed off the 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 chant and doing all of that, but uh, be ready to go. Just do, do everything that you can and cut it loose, have fun, enjoy the moment. Enjoy some of that moment, but uh, go in there and knock somebody out. And TJ might be a perfect time with Coach Thompson said right there. What's the message you got for the team? Prepare, you know, study, do your proper preparation. And then when you get there, you lay it on the line. That's this your brother. You're playing for your teammates. So lay it on the line for your teammates. You play as a unit. You play as a unit, you can beat anybody. You can beat anybody. You just all got to be running on the same cylinder, on a, all on one accord. If you can get everybody functioning and operating as one and you've studied, and you know what, you can beat anybody. So don't don't bow down. Go in there with your head up high, and show them when they look at you, smile, show your teeth, then then give them a growl or something to knock your ass out and get with it. Ooh, yeah, TJ, I love it. Yes. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute honor to have three of my most favorite people on earth on this show today to talk about mindset. We had so many great memories. Thank you all so much. So I think we'll be kind of cool is to do our slogan "Southern Miss to the Top" to close the show together. You guys okay with that? I'll tee it up. Be good. All right. Then from Coach Bauer, TJ Slaughter, Coach John Thompson, and myself, let's give the Southern Miss Nation a big Southern Miss. To the, to the top. top. To the top. To the top.
Do you, have, do you have makeup on, Marshan? I think you do. No, this is a this is a set. I have an LED light in and some stuff. Come on, I, I have an LED light. Y'all can't see. TJ, new hairstyle. I like it. What's up, TJ? I ain't seen it like that. Too. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, man? Good Lord, son. Good, you wouldn't good. even make the damn grooming rules and everything. <laughs> well, we're working on it. I got my maintenance. I, I, I bet if we turn it on, here's Will Hall, my maintenance man. Uh, I love it. I tell Big Coach Bauer he's got Will Hall running a quick errand for him. Chad Williams just walked out of the office. Said Chad. Chad. Chad was not normal. He was like <laughs> he was. He was normal. He was, he was, he was, and, he was that, and that was not the norm. You know what I'm saying? He was cerebral, quiet, right. did what he was supposed to do, no maintenance. A no rarity in coaching, just the exact yeah. opposite of you, Mark. Man. You are high like maintenance. Opposite. DJ, you need to start working out, man. Yeah. Hey, love, all love all you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. All right, Be Thank you. Great right. seeing you, TJ. Great.